take a girl and a guy, and they fall madly in love and form a family. Sprinkle in some counseling degrees and a doctorate, a dream of transforming relationships as we know it. And 20 years later, we give you power couple Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. And this is their podcast, Couples Synergy. And welcome back to another episode of Couples Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean. Hi, I am Dr. Ray. And I'm Jean. And this is our podcast about love, marriage, and relationships. Please check us out online at couplesynergy.com or on Facebook and Instagram at couplesynergy or on YouTube where we're doing some video podcasts too. And please subscribe to our podcast, leave us a review, or send us any suggestions on topics you'd like to hear more about. And now on to Couple Synergy, an in-depth look at love, marriage, and relationships, where we bring you our experience helping thousands of couples transform their relationships for over 20 years. Everyone says you should work on your relationship, but nobody teaches us how. So we've, we've created this podcast to teach people what they can do, to create the relationship they've always dreamed of. With the partner they fell in love with. On today's episode, we are talking about chaos. Chaos. Everything's chaotic. Chaos. <laughs> you were going to share some other stuff for Yes, us, I am. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Before we talk about chaos, I am going to, I wanted to share a uh, review from our podcast that we got here from... I'm giving you eyes behind the scenes. Elizabeth George. Uh, it's all about relationships. I've learned so much and have done so much reflecting in my life after listening. I highly recommend subscribing. Thank you, Elizabeth. That is a wonderful, wonderful review. Yeah, you know, that's um, awesome because she talks about really reflecting on her life. Yeah, yeah. And that's what relationships are here for, to help us mirror back to us who we are and... In order to change, we can't change unless growth. we're reflecting mm-hmm. within ourselves. And and then if both partners are doing that, then they can create that change that yeah. they're looking for. Uh, another uh, review here is from Carrie. Great show. Mm. I really enjoy listening to this podcast. It has helped me see my marriage in a new way and the tools I need to continue building a stronger relationship. Thank you, Carrie. That's the whole I like I like point. the whole tool thing because yeah. you know people think I'm either good at a relationship or I'm not yeah. with no training, no experience, no guidance, no, no anything. Nobody's got it down. No. We don't come out of the womb and we're experts at it. It doesn't work that way. But working on it does do something and learning skills and having tools benefits us. So it isn't just a matter of trying, it's a matter of learning as well. So thank you for that one. Yeah. And we are just shy of 200,000 unique downloads. Wow. Yeah. That's fabulous. Just 10,000 more. So Very cool. Thank you for all that thank support. You. That's wonderful. That's really You know, awesome. obviously the United States is is where we have the majority of our listeners, but uh, in the top 5 there we have Canada, India, Australia, and the UK. You know, we've done quite a bit of uh, hosting of podcast guests from Canada. But if you're in India and you'd like to come on our podcast and share your story, that'd be really cool. That would be awesome. Especially, you know, how this is impacting your relationship. Mm -hmm. That would be very Mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, we'd love to talk about, Mm -hmm. you know, any cultural differences, if Mm -hmm. there are any. There's plenty. Or how much, well, there are, definitely. (laughs) But, you know, or if there are things that translate, you know, across Mm -hmm. cultures. That would be really awesome. So on to chaos. Talking about chaos. So Ray doesn't really know what we're talking about with chaos because... This wouldn't be the first time. (laughs) This is really kind of my thing. I was sleeping last night and I had this dream. And in this dream, I was putting things in order. All of the sudden, it wasn't in order anymore. And I thought about little kids where they, you know, maybe they're making a sandcastle or they're stacking blocks and they're making a tower. And another kid comes along, and what does that other kid want to do? Knock it over. Knock it over, right? Yeah, yeah. And that's how we are as human beings, because we have this competing drive in us, where we have a drive for certainty mm-hmm. and, st- and stability mm-hmm. and safety and security, but we also have this drive to grow. And the most potential of growth comes in chaos. In disruption. In disruption, yeah. So if yeah. you think about the beginning of the universe was chaos. Mm-hmm. And what happens in chaos 
is everything gets shaken up. And this is similar if you've ever gone to any sound healing stuff, which we're big proponents of and occasionally we offer sound healing. We actually do a sound healing component in our weekend intensive. In our weekend intensive. Yeah. And the reason for that is death and disease negative emotions, they don't have a pattern. They're all choppy. Mm -hmm. If you look at what anger looks like on a graph, it's like, but health and life and happiness, they do have a pattern. They have that perfect sound wave. And when you do something like disrupt the energy around you through sound, through other things, doing something different, chaos, uncertainty, there's that opportunity then for it to find it's natural rhythm again. Mm -hmm. And that's what happens in the universe. If something gets like a, if an asteroid hits into something and it'll send it out of trajectory into space, sooner or later it's going to find a magnetic pull mm -hmm. through the laws of attraction, which work the same way for us. And it'll find its own orbit in a place that is now part of a system. That's how our solar system was created. I have a biological uh, example. Oh, that I can, I can add here. When I worked in the hospital system, uh, they use, and still to this day, use electroconvulsive therapy uh, for those that have very severe depression, all right? And a lot of people have this misconception of what electroconvulsive therapy is based on the movie of, you know, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Uh, it is not like that. It is actually done as a surgical procedure. The person is put under anesthesia. Um, but it is used to treat very severe depression, someone who does not respond to other antidepressants. It is used for uh, elderly adults where antidepressants can actually cause, you know, heart deterioration. So what happens is that there is this electric pulse that is sent through the body and it's sent through the, the temples here. And, you know, the body goes into this, this like contraction and then it, it releases. And the whole concept of this is to stir up all of the neurochemicals. And it acts, it actually and acts as a reset button mm -hmm. to get the neurochemicals and neurotransmitters to reset to a normal level, right? Right, because neurons that fire together wire together. Right. And when they're firing, they're producing brain chemistry, which is producing... Mm -hmm an emotion, which is producing a thought, right. and then they get stuck in that loop. Mm -hmm. And so it disrupts that mm -hmm. pattern that the brain is used to so that it could find a an equilibrium that is much more well-suited for the person. So that's fantastic. So I was able to explain it enough that you understood it. Mm -hmm. So that's yep. great. Yep. So when you think about your own life, you think about how many patterns are you stuck in? Probably if you're driving to work still, you're driving the same way to work. You are getting out of bed the same way. You are in the same space, probably sit at the, at the same place same when you watch TV. Yep. yep. And all of that is something we like as human beings. We like that certainty. We like to know that, you know, when we get out of bed, gravity still works and holds our feet to the ground. That's a good feeling. Don't want to wake up on the ceiling. Yep. Even if we don't understand it, you know, we would like that. And unfortunately... Because of the path of least resistance, that becomes the path of least resistance. Mm -hmm. And so one thing that Ray and I do a lot in our lives, and we're in the middle of it right now, is we will purposefully create a, a disruption. Mm -hmm. And we do that through a discipline. So right now we are in a 40-day discipline where we have to walk three and a half miles every day. We have to sit and contemplate our life for a bit. And what we found is that when we get stuck in our rut, we tend to go to the path of least resistance and we waste some time. Mm -hmm. we're, we're not always focused or motivated. And um, Well, we could get stuck into these patterns because initially it's very comfortable, mm -hmm. right? It, that, that discipline of doing something, the repetitiveness, it brings about some type of consistency and control in our lives. And, you know, as human beings, you know, yeah, we are, we are caught between this, this tug of war of wanting control and order, but then also not wanting stagnation. So if we lived more organically, we would have opportunities for both. So you would have to go out into the field and pick weeds, but while you're picking weeds, you're meditating, you're not distracted, you are 
you're busy contemplating your life and then something will happen. You know, maybe a neighbor needs something because there's a, a problem or an animal comes by that you have to respond to or something happens, the weather comes up. Mm. And so with that interaction with nature allows that chaos to happen kind of regularly. I don't know if you've ever had this. This is like one of my favorite things. It doesn't happen so much anymore where all your electricity goes out. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And whatever you were planning on doing, like for dinner or... We just had that happen last month. We did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you but just for a minute. the power went out? No, it was like an hour. It but an it hour. was daytime, right? Yeah, it so, was daytime. But you know what I'm talking about? Like when you really have that outage and then you are you have to huddle together around mm-hmm. some candles so you can see and there's no distractions yeah, right. and you interact with people. Like that's one of my... That was always a, a really good feeling to me. I, I particularly embrace chaos. It's one of my favorite things. You like to I be like more, more certain. I order. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably why you didn't want to talk about chaos. But uh, chaos leads to better order. Chaos leads to leveling up. Hmm. You know, throughout our, our long term in business since 2002, you know, business is uh, quite a thing to go through. Talk and about chaos. You know, if you are an employee and you work for a company, you have an umbrella over your head. And your paycheck is in the bank every week and you don't have much uncertainty. Whether you love your job or not, it eliminates that piece of your life. But when you are an entrepreneur and you're running your own business, (laughs) you got the ups, you got the downs and you Mm -hmm. have to respond to them or you have to go back under the umbrella and work for someone else. Yeah. Right. And so we've kind of lived our lives like that. Whenever we get into a place and it feels like a squeeze, it's a terrible feeling. And you might feel this in your relationship. In your relationship, you might feel lonely. You might feel disconnected. You might feel bored. You might feel... um, The bored is a good thing. Yeah, but bored in the sense of same old, same old and not doing anything different to change that. Mm -hmm. And not really knowing how and disrupting that is really powerful, which is one of the reasons we created the weekend intensive. Mm-hmm. That's a major disruption of all your patterns with an infusion of a huge investment in your relationship. And it really resets stuff. And now let's take a little break to tell you a little bit more about our home study course called Relationship 101. One of our passions is really to bring this work to everybody. And a lot of times what we hear is one person in the relationship is wanting to work on it, the other one is not. And so this is a great way for you guys to get a taste of what it is like to work on your relationship in a fun eight date night video series to learn what you need to learn. Yeah, Relationship 101 consists of eight video modules, typically about 30 to 40 minutes long, with some discussion questions and exercises for couples to do together at the end. It's kind of a culmination of our work over 20 years and synthesizing all of the skills and tools necessary to create an amazing relationship. This online course consists of eight modules, which is five plus hours of course content. It also includes bonus resources, all designed to learn and grow together as a couple. It's fun, it's insightful, and gives you a great excuse to spend some extra quality time with your partner. All of this course content is valued at over $850. Currently now, it is priced at $387. And if you just go to go.couplesynergymethod.com slash relationship 101, it'll take you directly to the link. That's go.couplesynergymethod.com slash relationship 101. And if you're a single person, you can still benefit from it. So one of the disciplines we did in 2016 is we, I made a commitment to walk a thousand miles and you made a commitment to support me. (laughs) You were turning 50. It was your, it was your thing you wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so we went out and we learned to keep our bodies moving for 10, 12 hours at a time. And eventually to hike over mountain passes, which we continue to do today. Only we've changed to peaks, which is even more difficult. But we spent 20 days out in the wilderness, you know, with what we could carry on our back and just the two of us and no electronics, no music, no news, no emails, no. And that was quite a disruption. Mm -hmm. It's huge. If you are going on a day hike and you come back and you get back into the car and you're 
maybe your cell phone works the entire time, you are not really disconnected. You don't feel that disruption. But when you are out there 20 days in a row, you're waking up every single day and you are hiking and you are just in immersed in nature, there's such a huge disruption. Uh, we had that, that disruption when we went and did a 10-day silent uh, meditation mm-hmm. retreat, and that was quite a disruption, too. And you can't even talk to anybody about it. Or and each so you're other. Just, or each other, right. So you're just locked in. That's the longest in. we had disconnected in our relationship. From, right, but we when couldn't each even... each of us did our 10 We couldn't day. even call each other mm-hmm. or anything. We were just, you know, gone off the grid for 10 days, and you are just in this place of disruption and chaos and in the case of the the you know the silent meditation retreat you are in chaos in your head in your head it's like a super and your body's like yeah. sitting Ugh. perfect so you're in certainty with your body your body's not moving and, and it's si- sitting on the body. ground and then your mind is like ah! Right. But it's like a Super Bowl going on the inside, like, blah, 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 and, and you don't really, and, and you can't sleep. And, you know, that disruption, it jars all of those things that are just stuck in there. I would say, and I'm sure you agree with me, but you can speak for yourself. It permanently changed me. Yeah. Both the, the, the Vipassana 10 day meditation, silent meditation retreat, and the being out in the wilderness permanently changed me where I cannot. To, you know, we talk about sensitivity and desensitization, mm-hmm. and most of the stuff coming at us today desensitizes us because it moves so fast. We have to like dial our sensitivity down just to tolerate the the fastness of technology. Yeah. There's a lot of subtle things we don't even really know how they're impacting us fully, like all this uh, electricity surrounding us all the time, or just the radio waves yep. from cell phones and cell or towers, or little and- little background sounds yeah you know just something humming that Mm -hmm. because it's electronic and that impacts us and one of the things we just switched to was uh, analog which is a really interesting thing so listening to vinyl records mm -hmm. that's what she's talking about yep so vinyl records are recorded in analog which is that sound wave again and because it's that rounded sound wave you get this richness and this um the essence of that music. Whereas digital is more square, square. and it just actually kind of cuts off Mm -hmm. the entire wave of that sound. So you are actually missing out, you know, on parts of that audio. So all of that tunes us because we are part of in, in a system that gets entrained. So whatever's around us, we kind of get on that wavelength. So if you've ever gone to a great concert and everyone there's on the same wavelength, that's a really powerful experience. Mm-hmm. Same reason people gather and, and worship or go to ball games or whatever. You are you're joining that collective on the same wavelength, which feels fantastic. Yeah. Or you're joining the group think not on a good wavelength. Well, it's of, still it's still a wavelength that you're joining. It's just, you know, what what frequency right. do you want to tune into? It's just not so healing. It's more disruptive and makes us more angry yeah. and fearful. And there's a lot of that in the world. And to disrupt any of that is very unsettling. Yesterday, we were talking about some archetypes, and you chose a thing called the empty room. Mm-hmm. And how terrifying is that? And I was thinking, Ray, that we should do that. We should spend an hour a day in an empty room. And not speak and not do anything, just sit there and see what that does. I'm imagining it's going to be a little painful. Well, I, yeah, I mean, it's taking me back to Vipassana, Vipassana and sitting yeah. in your own room at mm-hmm. night and not being able to sleep. But, you know, when you... That's th- important things for human beings, though, and we yeah. don't have much of that at all. No, no. You know, disruption in a relationship is a good thing. Mm -hmm. That chaos is a good thing. It's actually a precursor to creating something new and to creation in in of itself. Most people shy away from it. Mm -hmm. We don't like that feeling of things being chaotic and things not being in control and things not being predictable. But what we're talking about here is finding that balance you know, the finding the balance, it actually creates flow. It actually creates movement in the relationship versus that stagnation. If you're stuck in chaos, that is not good either, right? That is going to feel really bad, and you're just really going to feel just not grounded. And if you're stuck in stagnation, 
that's not good either. It is the the polarity of both of it that brings that movement and life into a relationship. It also ultimately can lead to joy. But you have to stick with it long enough. That's the hard part. Because when you're in chaos, you're, you want to brace yourself. And if you brace yourself, you're going to create worse things because everything's trying to break up. So, you know, I always give the example of if you're going to jump off a cliff and the cliff is 30 feet high, don't take a 15 foot rope and tie it around your waist into a tree because you're just going to slam into the side of the cliff. That's not good. And when we do that, when we resist the chaos that's happening in our life, when we resist this opportunity to kind of blow our lives up. And I'm sure you've had this happen to you where you you want to clean out a closet and for years you're just stuffing stuff into this closet. And the first thing you got to do is pull it all out. It is just a huge mess and piles everywhere. And then you can take a look at stuff and say, oh, this is garbage. I haven't used this in years. I don't need this. This reminds me of mm-hmm. some crappy thing that happened in my life. I'm throwing that out. And what you're left with is the stuff that's going to support your life, the stuff that is part of you getting to the next stage or phase of your life where you really want to be and also creates more healing because it, it's that weight or they say weight w-a-i-t and w-e-i-g-h-t are related how long you w-e-i-g-h-t is how long you have to w-a-i-t for change to happen in your life and chaos allows us to let go and you know throughout history we've had periods of this where you didn't have a choice you know, when people went through wars, when people went through famines, when people went through like, we can't survive if we just sit here, we have to do something different. And, you know, I was just talking to this woman yesterday and she said, the story is a true story. These miners, they came out to dig for gold, I think in California during the, the rush, the gold rush. For years, they they dug and they dug and they dug and they finally gave up. And a little while later, some other group comes up and dug five feet further and found the mother load. That's like slot machine in <laughs> Vegas. <laughs> right? Yeah. And a lot of that is dependent on our attitudes. Our attitudes and our belief that this is certainty, this is going to happen, that somehow I trust in the process and I'm allowing myself to have a relationship with something bigger than myself and know that I'm being guided and led in the, in the right direction. Because other than that, you're tying the rope to the tree and you're banging into the edge. So chaos in a relationship, healthy thing. You could choose it. You could choose it. You can create chaos in your relationship by doing anything different. Drive a different way to work. Sleep on different sides of the bed. Right, right. Rearrange your furniture. Repaint your bedroom. Yep. Anything you do different means you have to think differently when you go into that space, which means you have to do something differently, which means you get to feel differently. Mm -hmm. And guess what? If you don't like it, change your mind. You can always change it. (laughs) (laughs) It reminds me of that episode of This Is Us where she cut her hair. You know, she cut it short and then the kids and everyone was not liking it. And uh, you know what? Why not? Just grow back. Just grow back and, and, and change it up. And that is actually what is really going to bring more excitement back into your relationship is, is doing those new things and, and bringing in that chaos and that change. Because without it, we're not living. We are just passing time. And that, I think, is just horrendously torturous. And if you're not sure... I promise you, you have a truth inside of you, a gut feeling that is telling you if you're happy or you're not happy, if something needs to come up for healing or change. The best way to tap into what that is trying to say to you is by finding the empty room and sitting alone with your thoughts and, you know, we, we were just talking about this last night because we're only a couple of days into our practice, how boring it is <laughs> because we can't go to our same distractions and the same thing we always do. We're not watching TV. And so it's boring. But I woke up this morning thinking, I, I think I'm going to paint. Mm. And I haven't painted in a really long time or had the desire to paint. And I woke up this morning and wrote. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I was inspired. And so, 
you know, that that's really where creativity is born. It's out of that chaos mm-hmm. and out of that boredom. If we are just distracting ourselves all the time, we are not giving ourselves that opportunity for growth, for creativity, for expansion and evolution. And for sure, you will get the test before you get the payoff. Mm -hmm. For sure, you will be disappointed because there won't be something certain. You know, that's one of the things that we've always had this debate because sometimes I like to just go explore and bump into whatever we bump into, especially if we want to eat. Mm-hmm. And sometimes we've been very disappointed because we're hungry and nothing's there or we can't get into a certain restaurant or yep. whatever. And to me, that's still a success. And for you, you don't like it. So you like to do the, your reviews and make sure and have a reservation and everything, which doesn't allow for, you know, that space, that Kronos, Kairos. Kairos. Experience. Kronos is our time, like our watch Time and chrono, uh, Kairos is time away with God. It's that time that seems to go by without us even noticing. And it's not to say that looking up, you know, restaurants and what you want to eat and reviews and all this stuff doesn't have a place. It's just it can become out of balance. And when we are trying to program our lives and we're trying to script our lives, then we lose a lot, kind of like that digital sound. We lose the whole essence of it. And it might come out clean. It might come out as perfect as perfect can be, but life isn't meant to be perfect. As you can see, even relationships are not meant to be perfect, but it's in the imperfection that we truly are living. I was reading a book last night, uh, Embraced by the Light by Betty Eady, and she has this near-death experience. And one of the things that is part of her journey is when she first goes into the, that space of, you know, moving out of her body, her first thing she wants to do is go check on her husband and kids. Hmm. And she's given this little bit of wisdom that says they're okay and they need to go through this experience and soon you'll all be together in spirit world And it's a really interesting concept because we're so fearful for our children. And that fear allows them to have a very small life Mm. and allows our life to be very small. And encouraging your kids to fall down, encouraging yourself to make mistakes or to try something new is it's it's uncomfortable. It's outside of that, you know, outside of the box. But that's where real living is. Real living is demands that we become what we need to become. If you're living smaller than you'd like, go ahead and find some chaos and disruption in your life. So we want to thank you for joining us today on Couple Synergy. Our passion is in helping couples and people have happy and healthy relationships. And this podcast gives us a fun way of bringing our knowledge and expertise to you, our listeners. For all of you listening, please let us know how you enjoy the show. If you have any questions, comments, or topic suggestions, please email us at contact at couplesynergy.com. For more information about Couple Synergy and our programs such as Relationship 101, the Home Study Course, the Couples Weekend Intensive, and our premier coaching program called Couple to Couple, look us up online at couplesynergy.com. And if you want to change up some of your intimacy, try the Bliss product. You can look up the Bliss products that we have on our website, too, on couplesynergy.com. And if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please download it and share it. And thank you for listening. Until next time, synergize your life and synergize your love. You have been listening to Couple Synergy with Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Couple Synergy was recorded, edited, and produced by Dr. Ray and Jean Ketkodian. Voiceover and music entitled Breathe and Let Go was recorded and composed by Gina Gonzalez. Mm-hmm.